Tonight on DC News Now, protesters gather outside DC police headquarters in Southeast. Their calls for action after seeing body cam video showing officers shooting and killing a man. The end in sight for the DC circulator. Hopefully, you know, people can express their um, disapproval of it. How DC plans to help riders impacted by the change and why a bus driver's union says the district needs to slow down. Another cool and starry sky this evening. We'll talk about overnight lows and what to expect on your Wednesday. I think we need data centers in Fairfax County, but I think it's a good idea to have them regulate it. Possible restrictions coming for Virginia data centers. What Fairfax County officials are proposing to address homeowners' concerns while still bringing in the money. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for DC News Now at 10 on DCW 50. I'm Susan Tram. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Flanagan. Right now, protesters are gathering in southeast DC. In the last half hour, the group marched to the 7th District Police Headquarters from the nearby McDonald's. That's where police shot and killed a man last week. And just yesterday, police releasing that body cam video from the two officers who shot and killed Justin Robinson. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg is live for us there in southeast. Hey, Daniel, good evening. Uh, these protesters have been on the move. What can you tell us what's happening right now? Well, Chris and Susan, uh, they were pretty quiet for the most part for the last 20 minutes or so, uh, just talking amongst each other. We did see, of course, uh, people behind me uh, with these signs, uh, justice for Justin, don't shoot. Uh, I'm sleep, don't shoot, some of these signs say, uh, referring to him being in uh, that car, uh, seemingly unconscious when police uh, came upon him in the first place. Uh, it, we do have some video of them marching through the streets. They started here at the 7th District headquarters, marched to McDonald's where they were met with a line of police that they were essentially yelling at, uh, as well as, of course, chanting these chants, justice for Justin. They made their way back here to the district headquarters about a half hour ago. It seems like they are uh, now trying to somehow interact with the police officers inside um, this building. We do know that there are barricades up in front of this building to prevent anybody from uh, getting really close to the door there. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it's been a lot of chanting. There has been anger and frustration, of course, over that body camera video that was released yesterday. Uh, we do know that a police car and the McDonald's, somebody threw some eggs at. Uh, but other than that, it has been um, fairly calm out here. Uh, we did talk with one woman a little bit earlier tonight. These are her feelings about why she is out here tonight. I wasn't actually ready to see what I seen, but actions need to be taken care of immediately because we don't want the whole city to wind up, you know, in the uproar. We just want justice for him. That's it. That's all. And we need answers tonight. And of course, uh, some of the answers, quote unquote, came from that video last night. But uh, of course, police and these protesters see that video in two very different lights. Uh, when police uh, fired 10 shots that killed Justin Robinson. Um, they are certainly getting more rowdy. You see somebody just threw what appeared to be a water bottle uh, toward the front door there. So we will uh, keep an eye on this situation um, right now. But uh, for now, we are live in Southeast DC. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. All right, Daniel, a lot of raw emotions out there. Thank you. Just into our newsroom, D.C. police are investigating a man who was shot and killed in Southeast. They say it happened on Benning Road right near the metro station. Now, police have asked for the homicide unit to get there on the scene to investigate. This is a developing story. We're going to stay on top of the details and bring you the very latest as soon as we get them. And in Montgomery County, Maryland, a Bethesda woman is dead. Her brother is charged with her murder. Police found Shannon Burnett's body last night at a home in Westlake Drive near Montgomery Mall. Her brother, Devon Miller of Indiana, is now being held without bond. Medical examiner will determine the exact cause and manner of death. Police so far have not announced a motive. New details tonight. The district is starting to phase out its circulator bus service. Yeah, the plan is to start eliminating service as early as October. Metro, though, will step in to help impacted riders. DC News Now's Mario Carbone reports. 
Chris and Susan, this is all about cutting costs. The city replacing circulator lines like this one here with more Metro bus services in hopes of saving about $30 million a year. But these changes, they are not sitting well with riders we spoke to. Every other day, I take it from here to Eastern Market. For Terry Marshall, the DC circulator is a main form of transportation. Without it, yeah, I have to wait for the regular Metro bus. And then if I miss one, I have to wait like about 20 minutes yeah. for the next one. And so the idea of cutting the service doesn't sit well with him. I just think they should keep it. Originally slated for March of 2025, DC is now phasing out the circulator service months earlier. In its latest proposal, the Roslyn DuPont line will be the first to go in October, followed by the Georgetown Union Station and Woodley Park McPherson lines in December, all to be replaced by Metro bus service. The National Mall and Lawn Font lines will stop entirely with no replacement. And a new shuttle from Anacostia to Stanton Pomeroy Street will replace the Union Station Congress Heights line. And that's the line Garrett Harris takes. It's going to make a huge section of, of Southeast um, unaccessible without a vehicle. Plus, he says it'll add more time to his commute. So that means I got to be at the bus stop probably 45 minutes to an hour before I need to be where I am instead of 20 minutes. Circulator drivers will also feel the impacts. These people will lose their jobs at Christmas time. What a gift. Raymond Jackson, president of ATU Local 689, is angry. Yes, they're, they're moving real fast and getting rid of this service. And if we at least kept the deadline that we had, it would have gave us time, some time to work all of this out. And the board is set to vote on this proposal. That should happen on Thursday. Reporting in Northwest, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now. All right, Francine has now become a hurricane as it gained strength in the Gulf of Mexico. You can see here it is now the sixth named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. Hurricane warning in effect along the Louisiana coast and a storm surge warning. They are in fact in Texas. Evacuation orders have already been issued at some coastal Louisiana communities as well as they prepare mm. for that hurricane. Yeah, they are not <laughs> messing around already no. asking families to mm -hmm. leave the area. These are yeah. low lining areas, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we saw what happened Katrina in 2005. You know, we don't want to repeat it. They don't want to repeat it. Mm -hmm. So they're obviously taking precautions well ahead of time. And uh, that's good news for them. Uh, in the sense that they are doing the right thing. There it is, just a satellite view. You just saw the radar view, and it is now on the move. Uh, it's uh, it been kind of meandering around part of the western portions of the Gulf of Mexico, but now it looks like it's starting to move a little bit more uh, cohesively as it gets towards the Louisiana coastline. For us, though, we're looking fine. 73 degrees, clear skies out there uh, this evening. We'll see those overnight lows drop down to around 60 degrees either side of it here in the district. Otherwise, we'll see 50s elsewhere across the board. How about our satellite view? Again, we've got clear skies on top of us. No weather uh, worries to speak of. So our headlines, so again, tracking the tropics, uh, dry and quiet right now, but local showers next week. We'll talk about that in the seven-day forecast coming up. All right, Scott, thank you. We're going to head over to Virginia now, where police are still searching for the missing Manassas Park mom, Amamta Coffley Bott. And tonight, they're urging anyone who had contact with her husband, Naresh Bott, to please come forward. Investigators are looking for the people who spoke with him between July 28th and August 5th. Now, these are folks who have yet to talk to police. In fact, officials say they've already had one person come forward just recently with some information that's been helpful in this case. All new tonight, Virginia's largest county now on the verge of implementing new restrictions for data centers. Those massive warehouses here, well, they hold the servers that power much of what we all do online. The centers themselves, they've been very controversial in Northern Virginia. In Fairfax County, well, is trying to change that. Our Max Marcilla joining us live tonight in Fairfax County. And Max, really, it's, um, if you will, sort of a balancing act for the county. Yeah, Chris, and that's because these data centers, they emit a lot of noise and they also can be too close to homes for some people's liking. Also, they use a lot of power to stay running. On the other hand, because of how much space it uses, it brings in so much tax revenue for the cities and counties they are in. And that's what the county here is trying to balance as they put forward some new restrictions. 
Fairfax County supervisors are trying to get out in front of an issue other Northern Virginia counties are seeing right now. Most notably Loudoun County, which has 40 million square feet of data centers and is trying to figure out how to manage the boom. We want to put in place protections for data centers in Fairfax County and not repeat the challenges that have been faced in neighboring Prince William and Loudoun counties. While Fairfax County only has 3 million square feet of data centers, it knows growth is in the future, and for some, that's not a bad thing. I think we need data centers in Fairfax County, but I think it's a good idea to have them regulated. Those regulations proposed include a buffer between residential areas and data centers, plus required noise studies and keeping them at least a half mile away from the metro. I don't have a data center being built next to me yet, but if I did, I'd want stronger Protections. My neighbor mows his lawn. Guess what? I can hear it. So my point is, I don't think that a low level of noise is something we have to get all worked up about, and, uh, and particularly when it's paying high taxes. But those opposed to the additional regulations fear it could dissuade data centers from coming here. They hope data center revenue can lower their cost of living. Hopefully the board will use additional taxes from data centers to, uh, to lower property taxes, to not impose a meals tax, which is something that they're looking at. And now we can tell you in the last half hour, the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors did take a vote on this measure and it passed eight to two. Chair McKay said this was a quantum leap forward. He said we as in Fairfax County want data centers, but want them in the right place and want to protect neighborhoods. So he is touting this as a victory as are several other supervisors. We did speak with some people after the vote who are sharing some concerns about what happens to those projects that have started to move forward before these in, these restrictions are in place. Again, it is a story that will continue to be told, but the main headline tonight is that the county is putting these restrictions in place. It passed with an eight to two vote. Reporting live in Fairfax County, Max Marcilla, DC News Now.